Hey there, welcome back to Ask Amy. Um, I have a question today from Petra, but before I get to Petra's question, I wanted to mention that in two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow, I'm gonna be doing a free two hour class on silence, on, um, yeah, silence. <laughs> the silence that's at like the center of everything and how we can feel into that and tap into it um, I mean, I, I just smile like thinking about it. There's just something so yummy and awesome in that silence. And, and so I will talk about some benefits of prolonged silence. Of course, I'm leading a silent retreat in February. So um, if you're interested in that, it all, it all ties into what will be happening after five days in silence there. But for those of you who... Um, wouldn't do a silent retreat to save your life, that's fine, or just don't have the ability to do it, that's totally understandable. There's still so much that we can get from little blips of silence in, in our everyday. And again, I'm not even talking about sitting in silence. I'm not talking about meditation. It's like right now, feeling the silence that's at the center of of all of this noise and all of these words. It's it, it's It's really beautiful, really powerful. So um, if you're interested in that, join me for the free class on November 12th. It's, um, I think it's dramyjohnson.com slash silence class. So you can check that out. And it's totally free again, and it's two hours. So I'll be talking about silence, some of the benefits, and then we're actually going to go into a little bit of silence together. Okay, so Petra's question, um, she says, my anxiety, overthinking, and panic attacks had been a huge problem until I realized what that really is, just energy arising and my mind telling me stories and telling me how I should feel, think, and do stuff. Pretty awesome. It's not a problem anymore because I see it for what it is, stories, imagination, and my mind was trying to protect me. It's so clear now. And I let it do what it needs to do, and it is a different experience now. I would say it doesn't bother me much anymore because I know it will pass. That's awesome. But what does bother me is that when I'm at any kind of social event, work, or somewhere around other people, I get the thought that I will have a panic attack, which leads me to have sensations like dizziness, shaking, which are not a big deal. But even though I know it's just a thought and the sensations are temporary, um, the fear I get with this thought about panic lasts for a long time. So I think Petra is saying there's the thought arises, I could have a panic attack. There's a lot of physical sensation, which come and go fairly easily, I guess. Um, but there's a fear, which she says in quotes, a fear I get with this thought about panic lasts for a long time. My question is, should I let that pass and get used to it, knowing it's not a real thing, or do something about it? Okay, so first, um, I'll answer your question, but... I think it's interesting to look into this fear. So you say the fear I get with the thought. So there's a thought, could have a panic attack, right? Just the thought shows up, it brings some sensation with it, not surprising. But now you're saying there's a fear of that thought and the fear of that thought lasts for a while. I want you, Petra, to get super curious about what that is. And and when I ask questions like that, what that is, not for you to... Um, answer that and like not that that has an answer but for you to explore it and feel into it be like okay there's the thought i could have a panic attack maybe you see an image of you having a panic attack or however that thought shows up here's the sensation right sensation comes with it no big deal we know this it's all moving it's all just so ungraspable it's it's fluid it's moving the whole time you can be in that you can lean into that a little bit and then it almost sounds like you're saying no, but then there's this fear that comes in that lasts longer. Well, what is that? Is that something different? Is that something outside of this fluid experience that's happening? Get really curious about that for yourself because it sounds like maybe your mind is telling you it is. Like, oh, this fear around it is a problem. But what's the fear if not another thought? What's the fear if not just a few more sensations? So it's maybe not its own special thing. It's not a problem. It's just more of the same. 
and and you can look and see really that's what's important don't listen to me look in your own experience and see can you see where the, the initial thought i might have a panic attack ends and now the fear begins are there boundaries like that is it is there separation there or is this all just this moving fluid experience full of sensation full of thoughts and and maybe it's the mind's kind of trying to make it look kind of choppy and separate and find a problem in there but you look and see what you see okay so your question petra my question is should i let that pass and get used to it knowing it's not a real thing or do something about it so i love when um the mind gives us these either or <laughs> like I'm, I know it's one of these two. I either have to do A or I have to do B. Which one do I do? Of course, it's never A or B. Both of these options are thought also. So it's just funny how it how it does that. Um, you know, <laughs> if there's something to do, this is the first thing I'll say about this. If there's something to do, I don't know what that might be. Um, you're sitting there, there's fear of having a panic attack. I can't kind of give you something to do, which is get curious about that, look into it. But if there's something else to do, like leave the room, get a drink of water, I don't know, do some breathing. Like if that occurs to you as something to do, you'll do it. It's really that simple. I would never tell you, like that's not something we can know outside of the moment. It's not like here's what you do in this situation when this comes up because it's not like that. Every life isn't like that. Every single moment is absolutely different and fresh and new. These rules and strategies and all of this that we have that we try to carry through time don't work and they don't make sense really because time is also just being created in real in real time right now instantly in the moment by thinking. So you know, I know this is like in the relative world, how we kind of try to do things like, let me learn from this and then take it forward. And I'll do this next time. I get that our entire lives have been conditioned into that, that kind of perspective. But it doesn't really work like that. It, it's so much more natural. If there's something that occurs to you in, a, in that moment, you will do it. If you see something to do, you're going to do it. And I couldn't begin to tell you, you know, something now to do later. It just, it wouldn't make sense. But trust that, trust that for yourself, that if there's something to do, you're going to do it. Um, so that was one option, right? Should I do something about it? Well, yeah, if there's, if something occurs to you to do about it, do it, right? Or, and of course, it's not an or, or should I let it pass and get used to it knowing it's not a real thing? Well, even that, and I know you're just, all we have is words here. Even that is not exactly it. It's not like, okay, now here's the strategy. We let it pass. We get used to it. We know it's not a real thing. Like that's a way we might describe it because we're trying to describe this fluid, indescribable, I don't know, isness with words. So some words are going to show up there, but it's not that it's not really those things. It's not really anything. It's like, but in the big picture, no question. Like, I don't even know what one would ever really do about thought. There is nothing ever really that we can do about thought because thought is, it just comes and goes and it doesn't mean anything. So always, if we're looking for freedom, if we're looking for peace, the direction to look in, as far as I have ever seen, is for sure to see that about thought because it's really not an issue. It's not a problem. It's not dangerous. It's nothing that we could possibly really do anything about. The me that is going to do something about it is also thought. So that doesn't, that, that way of treating it and seeing it doesn't really make sense. The only thing that really makes sense is to just stay curious, keep seeing it for what it is. If you can see, oh, like I was pointing to earlier, oh, you know, I have this thought about having a panic attack and then there's fear. If you can see more around the and then there's fear bit and it all starts to look like just more of the same, that's going to take care of all of this, right? So it, it, even when I say that, that doesn't mean it's never going to show up. It just, there's just more and more insight around it, more and more freedom and peace around whatever's showing up. So that's always if we need a strategy, that's always the strategy is see what the heck we're talking about. 
And the crazy thing about thought and feeling and experience like this is the more we look, the more we see that we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know what a panic attack is. We don't know what our fear is. Like, like really get into it. What is it? What's it made of? What's the texture of it? What's the feel of it? What are the images that come to mind? You start doing it at that level and it's like vapor. It just kind of disappears. But again, you check that out for yourself. And it's like, wait, what is all this fear? It feels so solid. It feels like there's a real problem here. And then you try to chase down the problem and see what happens. So that's what I would recommend. Sorry, that was a lot. Um, but I, I love this question. It, it yeah, brought in a lot of different things. So I um, hope that's helpful. Thanks for sending the question, Petra. Um, thanks for listening. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys at that silent class um, on November 12th.